One of the stories that I found fascinating is how you arrive at IBM. And arriving at IBM, you discover that the people that interviewed you yes. are no longer there. They've been moved to other parts yeah. of the of IBM the is called I've been moved. I've been so, moved. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized that first day, yeah. wow. <laughs> Not only have they been moved, your new boss hasn't arrived from Europe yes. to mm. give you an instruction. Yes. Mm. You are this young production, I would imagine, engineer, mm. and, uh, and you are being put into a technology sales role. Mm. Mm. Help us to understand what you then learned early on in IBM. Yeah. Because uh, those lessons seem to carry through in other businesses mm. that mm. you become part of mm. uh, later on in life. So, so getting in there, you, you, you can sit there and, and have nothing to do. But of course, somebody is paying for you. Be comfortable with that. That's one way you can sit. But, but for me, it worried me to just sit there. And I felt that I needed to be engaged and be productive. So I reached out to this manager of, of mine and who, who really did not even know about me. So I had to kind of introduce myself and explain why I am in this environment. Uh, he then said, look, in this environment where you are, we've got salespeople here. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, oh, I'm an engineer. You want me to do what? Sales? So I was kind of, honestly, I was looking down on sales, the whole sales thing. It's like, come on, <laughs> I'm an engineer. Don't ask me to do sales. Anyway, but, but there was no other role there. So you have to go to sales. And I'm giving you this responsibility to go look after this account. They give me the account SAPI. SAPI, those days, I mean, maybe even today, but it's largely an African organization. They've never had a person like me calling on them. Are you saying you're not Africans in person? No, I'm an African, yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A different kind of African. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Uh, anyway, I then realized quickly that I, I'm not sure. I, I thought that they, they probably felt that I'm not going to take the role. Uh, I took it and engaged. I quickly realized that, you know, South Africans, they, they, they look beyond this race thing, you know? And yes, we can be caught up in this thing, have it in your mind, but, but if you start to listen to what the customers are asking and looking, some of the challenges that the customers are facing and start to address that, everything else, people, this whole thing of who is serving me, it just disappears. People, what they see is the service. That, that you are giving, it, it just, to me, that was interesting to realize that, uh, that, uh, that we can quickly, people can quickly transcend some of the things that we see. Uh, and, and yeah, and from there, I could see how those people who I originally thought they would not welcome me, we ended up becoming my advocates. They sent emails to the CEO of IBM about this and saying that, and you know, and they in fact helped me. They helped my career to take off. These are people that I originally, I, no, nobody even thought they would accept me. So, but maybe mm. there's a context missing. Yeah. When you mm. arrive, SEPI is unhappy with IBM. Yes, yes, yes. And, very, and, very and unhappy. SEPI is about to leave. They yes, want yes. to give an account to a competitor. Yes, yes. And they are you very. You are talking about them being your biggest supporters. What yes. is that about? Yes, they, they were unhappy. They had stopped any buying from IBM. And they, you know, some of us who are, who are in, in business would know that. You know, uh, you don't want a company to anything, any amount that is over 100 days or 90 days overdue, you know, then, then every, you start to panic. 
Here we're talking about 120 days being owed to IBM by this company. They've withheld the payment because they were unhappy. So I decided to go and focus on solving this challenge that they were having with the company. So spend a lot of time within IBM, connecting with different people, trying to, to get the picture, because I was not there when this thing happened. Finally managed to get the picture and presented it back to IBM and also to the customer, who ultimately, when they saw, uh, then they were happy that, fine, we'll be able, now we understand, we have reconciled all of things, we understand why we need to do this, but this we're not going to pay, go back to IBM, hey, can you, you, know, you sort all of that. Uh, then they, they realized that, yeah, okay, this guy has helped us. We have sorted our, prob our big problem. Uh, so they end up being your supporter, and they ended up uh, giving us, the, well, the first outsourced customer, a company that is outsourcing their IT to another company. They were the first company to outsource to IBM. In South Africa? In South Africa, yes, in South so Africa. this is a company, before you arrive, is ready to fire IBM. Yes, yes. It owes IBM 12 million rand yes. for 120 days. Yes. A few months later, it settled it. Yes, settle. Twelve minus what yes. they're willing to settle. Yes, and they give and, them forty million rand. Forty, contract. 40 million rand. It was the biggest contract uh, that we had as a company at that time, right? How uh, old are you at this stage? Old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's clear, but sometimes time is yeah, relative it, it, to African. Yeah, mid career. Our mid, mid, mid career. Yeah, okay. mid career. Uh, like thirty something. Yeah, that's young, dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. some of us are thirty something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's so they give us this this big contract and yeah, and it just transforms the the IBM business. But the problem is, I'm just like less than a year. I'm a year and a bit. I get this recognition, end up going overseas with my wife. You know, I started to see how you know this sales thing is a great thing. Right? <laughs> 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 so they say in sales, uh, you're either in sales yeah. or you're serving somebody yeah. in sales. But look, I realized that, that first my impression of sales was you need to be this extrovert, this guy who's like forever talking. Uh, uh, but Is that not true? But then I realized that no, actually customers... They want people who, who listen to them. They don't want this thing of coming, you prepare everything. And even today, I'm still coaching my guys today, because I still do calls today, you know, current job and go to Sister at Bank, go and see this customer, uh, this, uh, this partner or an associate partner. They go and prepare, they say, no, create, a space for the customer to talk. There is nothing that people like the most than talking about themselves. <laughs> Create that opportunity for them to, you'll be surprised how much you learn out of that. You know? And then we do, do, then the next thing, one and a half, the meeting was scheduled for 45 minutes, one and a half hours late, we're still there getting information. Which like means that. the next sales guy competitor has less time going yes, to yes. taking up that time. Plus, now you understand the things that make this person not to sleep at night. So you can talk, you can, when you're coming back now, you, you're talking to those issues, right? So, yeah, so basically customers, yeah, then, yes, it's great to see all of these salespeople that, uh, that but great salespeople are the ones that listen. <laughs>